Hello, thank you for downloading this video cast on the subject of primary system organ class allocation in MEDRA. This is the first in a planned series of video casts on topics related to MEDRA. In this presentation, I will start by discussing a key principle underpinning the concept of primary system organ classes, namely that MEDRA was designed by the International Conference on Harmonization, or ICH, as a standardized terminology. I will then consider the reason why system organ classes, or SOCs, are given the designation as primary for particular terms, and I will describe the rules that govern the allocation of the primary SOC. Finally, I will describe how primary SOC allocations can be changed through the AMSSO's change request process. MEDRA was developed in the mid-1990s by an expert working group of the ICH through the multidisciplinary initiative known as M1. The aim of this initiative was to create a standardised, internationally accepted terminology for regulatory activities that is both medically rigorous and actively maintained. As such a standard, MEDRA facilitates the communication, including electronic data interchange, of clinical safety information in the regulatory process. The ICH also authorised a group of drug safety experts from regulatory authorities and industry to draft the MEDRA Term Selection Points to Consider document as a guideline for MEDRA users in coding clinical information. This ICH endorsed document states, and here I've highlighted the last sentence in bold for emphasis, MEDRA is a standardised terminology. It is considered essential that ad hoc structural changes in MEDRA not occur. The assignment of terms across SOCs is predetermined within the terminology and should not be altered by users. Having reviewed the background behind the concept of primary SOC allocation, I will now describe what primary SOCs are and the reason for them. MEDRA is designed as a multi-axial terminology, which means that a medical concept can be represented in more than one system organ class. This reflects the complexity inherent in medicine itself, where diseases cannot always be forced or pigeonholed into mutually exclusive classifications. The purpose of this multi-axial structure in MEDRA allows users to group terms by different classifications, such as by anatomical site or by the underlying cause of the condition. It also provides flexibility for users to retrieve and present data in different sets. One example of a multi-axial term is the preferred term dyspnea. It has a link to both SOC respiratory, thoracic and mediastinal disorders, its organ system of manifestation, and to SOC cardiac disorders because of its connection to heart disease. The respiratory SOC is designated as its primary SOC, and the term also has a secondary link to SOC cardiac disorders. Of the more than 18,000 preferred terms in MEDRA, approximately 40% of them are multi-axial, having links to more than one system organ class. Most of the links are to only two system organ classes, such as in the case of the preferred term dyspnea. However, some PTs have multiple links, and the current record holder is the preferred term charge syndrome, a congenital condition which has links to eight different system organ classes. One can easily appreciate the need to bring some order to this situation. Therefore, of the multiple associations for a multi-axial PT, one is designated as primary and all the rest of the SOCs are designated secondary. Thus, when data are displayed in a standard cumulative data output such as a table or listing, representing terms just in their primary SOC location avoids double counting. Display by primary SOC also supports consistent data presentation for reporting to regulators. For example, a regulatory reviewer would find it easier to compare safety profiles of products if companies adhered to the standard primary allocations. Now I will review the rules for primary SOC allocation. I must emphasize that the allocations are hardwired into the MEDRA ASCII files. The general rule is that preferred terms relating to diseases or signs and symptoms are assigned to their prime manifestation site system organ class. So for PT dyspnea, the primary SOC is SOC respiratory, thoracic and mediastinal disorders. However, there are exceptions to this general rule for three types of terms. Firstly, terms for congenital and hereditary anomalies are assigned to SOC congenital, familial and genetic disorders as the primary SOC. 
terms for benign and malignant neoplasms are assigned to SOC neoplasms benign, malignant and unspecified, including cysts and polyps, as the primary SOC. However, in an exception to the exception to the rule, this does not apply to cyst and polyp terms. These terms have as their primary SOC assignment their site of manifestation SOC. Finally, terms for infections are assigned to SOC infections and infestations as the primary SOC. These primary SOC assignment rules were instituted as MEDRA was being developed in order to aggregate certain critical issues, namely congenital anomalies, neoplasms and infections, into specific places in MEDRA to facilitate safety signal detection. For detailed information on the primary SOC allocation rules, please refer to the MEDRA introductory guide. Here is a topical example of a multi-axial PT, swine influenza, which was added to MEDRA in version 12.1. It is represented in the respiratory SOC as its prime site of manifestation, and also in SOC infections and infestations because it is a viral infection. According to the primary SOC allocation rules, SOC infections and infestations is the primary SOC. Finally, I will review how primary SOC allocations can be changed. As I mentioned previously, the primary SOC allocations are hardwired into the MEDRA ASCII files, but sometimes users attempt to circumvent this and reassign the primary SOC to one of their own choosing. Some coding and data management systems allow users to, quote, choose the primary SOC rather than using the allocation built into the files. The MSSO strongly discourages these ad hoc changes because they undermine the intent of MEDRA as a regulatory standard. We do acknowledge that there may be some incorrect primary SOC allocations in MEDRA of which we are not aware. In this case, we encourage subscribers to submit a proposal to change the primary SOC assignment for any given term through the usual change request process. In considering a subscriber's request, the MSSO will carefully review the justification provided along with the already established allocation rules. In this way, the change is implemented and made available to all MEDRA subscribers. Here is an example of a primary SOC allocation for PT factor 8 deficiency being corrected through the change request process. In an earlier version of MEDRA, its primary allocation was to SOC blood and lymphatic system disorders, but since this is an inherited condition, the primary SOC allocation was corrected and changed to the congenital SOC with a secondary link to SOC blood and lymphatic system disorders. In summary, in this videocast, we have reviewed the concept of primary SOC allocation in MEDRA, the reasons for it, and the rules governing it. We have discussed the importance of adhering to these allocation rules in order to support the use of MEDRA as a regulatory standard. We hope that you have found this videocast informative, and we welcome your feedback on it. If you have any suggestions for future videocast topics, please send them to the MSSO Help Desk at mssohelp at ngc.com. Thank you for viewing this videocast.